Hi, everybody, and welcome to another exciting edition of Sports Spotlight, special edition high school hockey action featuring the Spartans of Livonia Stevenson hosting the Majors of St. Michael's of Toronto. This is Neil Rifkin along with Dennis Pushies. And Dennis, we have a pregame ceremony going on at Center Ice right now. Yes, we have a ceremonial puck drop tonight featuring former Stevenson principal Jim Gibbons. His uncle, Father William Gibbons, was a teacher for 10 years at St. Michael's before returning to the United States as a principal at Catholic Central. Out on the ice are Captain Robbie Koo from St. Michael's and Captain Austin, Ad Austin Adamick from Stevenson. Very nice ceremony. Jim Gibbons, one of the finest men I've ever met in my life. Very apropos for him to got that ceremonial Absolutely. Puck. And uh, what a great concept we had. Special treat for our viewers at home. First time we've had, well, we've had St. Francis of Toledo here in Sports Bot, right? Second up, but no, we have not had a team from Canada up here on this show. And St. Michael's is a storied, uh, storied institution with a fine hockey program that goes all the way back since the 1930s. And, uh, they have a very good record coming in this contest, and of course, you can't ignore the, our our Spartans from Livonia Stevenson. Yeah. And take, take your pick your poison, pick your nuclear bomb. They are up there in the top four in Division Two here in the state of Michigan. Stevenson in the white, St. Michael's in the blue, and we're underway. Yeah. Should be an excellent matchup for our viewers at home. And you'll see speed galore here. Just speed galore. Both teams very fast. According to Coach Dave Mitchell from Stevenson, the Majors are a highly, highly respected program in the Ontario area, and he takes this as a real challenge for his Spartans tonight and, and looks for a great game. Well, I, I, checked, I checked the ratings out on uh, one of the websites. They are ranked at number 22 and number 23, not in just the province of Ontario, but all of Canada. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. And, and they have a good, and they have a fi and fine winning record coming into this contest. And of course, Stevenson coming out to Trenton Showcase, shutting out Trenton in their own backyard and beating Hartland, number, uh, number one team in Division Two. Yeah, they, they uh, got a hold of Trenton, beat them six to nothing, but, um, you know, that'll be one of their. That would be one of their uh, teams that they might have to play when it comes playoff time. So regionals in the regionals, yeah. Seems like it always seems like for years it's always come down to Stevenson and and Trenton being somewhere, meeting somewhere, and you know the rivalry just is crazy. Well, battling for that puck, that's number 19. Steve Hunt had it, and now controlling it is uh, Joe Sharkey, number three for Stevenson. Gets a little bump there from number 16, Stefano Lopardo for St. Mike's. And going after it now, it's uh, Cole Gardner. Gardner had it, lost it. Good check in the boards there by Stevenson. Sinclair had it for St. Mike's, and now the Majors will regroup. It's uh, Sinclair again. Correction on that. That's Lopardo. Dumps it into the corner. Battle for it in the corner there. Got an uh, awesome Adamick, team captain. And the clear that puck. St. Mike's putting on some pressure early on. Sinclair holding it in. As the puck now battles Adamick along with Sharkey. Well, it's like a little rugby matchup yeah, right they there. Wanna, they, wanted the corner. Them, they weren't going to blow the whistle. They wanted them to move the puck out themselves. Here's a chance for uh, Jaron Anderson. Puck goes just a little too far. Still inside the St. Saint, Saint Michael zone. Um, right behind St. Michael's goaltender Peter Hutchinson in the pipes for uh, the Majors. Now the puck is slapped down the ice by Colin Jang, number seven. His pass up ice to Chris Edwards, number 17. Gets a check in on the boards there from uh, Dylan Dasky. Yep, got a little 
piece of the referee too, unfortunately. <laughs> Stephen McDonald has it, finally clears it back to center ice, but not backed inside the Stevenson zone by David Bas Bassiano. And here comes St. Michael's again. Another check right along the left wing. On Jake Laville, number 22. St. Mike's, and here comes Stevenson now. Ian Kimball, Kimball. Can't find a teammate, he'll just dump it in the corner. St. Michael's will regroup. Cross ice pass, goes too far, goes in the corner. It's a nice and call on St. Michael's. What I expect tonight, and we'll, only time will tell, but when you have two good hockey teams like this playing, you're gonna see a fast-paced hockey game, and you're also gonna see them playing hockey and I could be wrong, but very few penalties just because of the discipline factor. They're yep. both well coached, yep. well schooled on how to play <laughs> hockey. They're more about playing hockey than, you know, the physical. I mean, I'm not, they're both physical. Both teams, yeah. Yeah, they're both physical, but they, they do it in a clean type of way. They play hockey, and I'm expecting a fast paced game so let's see what we get we get two top programs here so correct can't you can't beat it yep. one, one of them on the top one team on the tops in the state of michigan the other one on the tops in all of canada yeah <laughs> yeah that's and stevenson has been on i don't know the the history other than what coach mitchell has told me and then the, talked to coach dan brown he's in his first year coaching st michael's but mm -hmm. Uh, Coach Mitchell just said that there's a storied history with, uh, for years, with St. Michael's majors. It is. You, you, you can go back to the 1930s. I'm going to hold off on that for just a moment, but let our viewers enjoy this fine, fine, fine action here as Stevenson will dump it down inside the St. Mike's zone. Battle now into the corner, now taken. That was, again, number 26, Thomas Sinclair. Had it, lost it. Now recovered there by, looks like, Ed Clue, number five. Here comes St. Mike's again. They'll just, again, double in the corner. It's an icing call on St. Michael's. Well, and we'll place three 17-minute periods. And in case there's a tie at the end of regulation, we will have overtime. An eight-minute overtime. Yep. Correct. Uh, ironic that you said... Thomas Sinclair for St. Michael's Majors because in years past, not too many years past, yeah. but Churchill has had a couple players, um, Matt Sinclair and Adam Sinclair, yep. and Stevenson has had Mickey Sinclair. Yep. So, you know, when I when you say the Sinclair name, I automatically think of Churchill or Stevenson, but here's yep. a, here's one on St. Michael's, and I doubt if they're a relation, but I mean, Sinclair's a pretty popular name, but who knows? A coincidence? Yeah, just a coincidence, but... Here we are doing another broadcast with a Sinclair out there. <laughs> and Peter Hutchinson makes a stop for the majors. The faceoff will remain inside the St. Michael zone. You know, it's just a thrill having, you know, you know we, for a number of years, for the last five, six years, we've been doing a lot of conference games. The uh, majority of our broadcasts this year will be non-conference. So we got St. Francis, a Toledo scheduled to appear here on Sports Spotlight. Now we got St. Michael's in Toronto. Correct. Wow. Yep. Yeah, you're talking about story. You know, great example. Uh, one one members uh, one one member of the alumni from St. Michael's just got honored by the Red Wings. He tried, had his name and his uh, number four retired. Long overdue in my oh, opinion. Oh yeah. Red, Red Ke Kelly. Red Kelly. Yeah. Right? Alumnus of St. Michael's. Yep. And there's a couple others yep. I'll mention throughout this contest. Action. Remains inside the St. Mike's zone. And for you folks at home, please don't text message. You're going to miss some of the action here. <laughs> Got to emphasize: you you turn you turn your eyes away from this from your television screen, whether it's a little one or a big one. Uh, you're going to miss some action as St. Mike's comes down the ice. They score just like that. And I believe that was Luke Geiger, number nine, who took a nice pass right down center ice. And we got a replay coming up. And I think number it was it was Luke Geiger, number nine. And, yeah. and Brandon Raftis, I mean, I think it was number 14 who set that up. Watch this. I think the replay coming up. Check into the boards. There's Pierre on number 23, yep. who makes the original hit. 
two Raftus, and then R Raftus, and then, then there's Geiger. And he beats goaltender Eric Polzin. Yeah. Polzin's been a good story in himself uh, this year for Stevenson. But well, that traffic jam in front of the press box caused that yeah. loose puck. Raftus took care of it. Correct. Took advantage, passed it on to Geiger, and St. Mike's gets on the scoreboard first. And they lead it one to nothing. So it will go. Geiger, number nine, will get the goal from number 14, Raftus, and 23 pair, and the time of the goal is 5.20 of the first period. Yep, yep, number 23, Mike Pereira, will get uh, an assist as well. Uh, yep. So let's see if Stevenson can regroup and maybe tie this one up. Like you said, Dennis, uh, this action is going to go back and forth. And here I find it highly unlikely that that will rattle Stevenson. They, no. They, no. Uh, They've been in situations where they've been ahead. They've been in situations where they've been behind. They're a very well coached team, and he's, he'll he'll get them all together. They'll be okay. Yeah, well, just to refresh our viewers at home, is that Stevenson, their opening game, which was against Brother Rice, they, they lost to them, but then they went on a 12-game unbeaten streak. Correct. And But the thing is this, they're in a log jam right now at the top of the rankings. With, you know, like I said, pick your nuclear bomb. It'll be your Heartland, Brother Rice, Trenton, or Livonia Stevenson. It's, it's been Heartland, Trenton, Stevenson, one, two, three, and then yeah. Brother Rice, number four, in the recent weeks leading up to this cable cast. Uh huh. And here comes St. Mike's again down the other way, number 13, Riley, Riley Doig. Had it, lost it, and now, and it looks early on right now. St. Mike's is controlling that neutral zone, but that is subject to change. Sure. Here they come again. Sinclair now for St. Michael's. Long pin and then bouncing puck caught by Polzin. He'll make the stop. Eric Polzin in between the pipes for yeah. Stevenson. I want to emphasize something, too, that you will be calling a lot of names and people at home will be seeing a lot of Stevenson players yeah. because in talking to Coach Mitchell before the game said they have a very balanced team. He's not afraid to run four lines and they do it effectively. He has 10 players with at least 10 or more points on the season, which is very balanced. It is. So you'll be calling a lot of names tonight, Neil, and which is good because there's, uh, you know, they, they share the they share the wealth, let's put it that way. And, and they share, it doesn't matter what currency was, American <laughs> or foreign. Foreign, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> or the euro for that matter. Correct. <laughs> or in this case, when we're dealing with a, can, a Canadian team, it could be the Canadian dollar, but. Uh, yeah. And of course, we could probably, and also speak of which, if we get a chance, we'll also throw in a, a tribute to our good, our the good man, the tribute to all the patrons. I can see the patron scene of broadcasting, the, Mr. Danny Gallivan. Who else? Yeah, oh, yeah, you love him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll, we get some good cannonading shots coming in here later on as Sharky, his shot deflected into the corner. Battling up right, between right behind the Stevenson net. I'm correction on it. I'm sorry. I can keep mixing up. You know, David Bastiano for St. Mike's with that shot from the blue line. C. Mike's with the pressure. Got two teams with uh, those blue, well, same color, uh, same team colors. How's that? Yeah. I mean, you you could look at the team in the dark, w dark blue, and you could think that that's Stevenson for those people who who know the Stevenson team. And, you know, it's hard to tell the difference because that's exactly what Stevenson's road uniforms look like. Yep. But they're, tonight they're wearing their home whites. Heard now, Brendan Heard has it, lost it. And now St. Mike's will clear it at their own blue line. And Hutchinson will make the stop. Brendan Heard, just mentioned number five. He's a he's a uh, sophomore, and his brother Adam, number 15, is a freshman. So you know, I the ceiling is high there for uh, Coach Mitchell. At Adam Hearn, I'm very impressed, especially in the game against Churchill. He was just all over the place giving hard checks against the Chargers. Uh, he's going to be a versatile player as long as he stays healthy for the next three, four years yep. for Coach Mitchell. One heck of a player. Whoa. Here comes St. Michael's now going the other way. And on the left wing, it's Sinclair again. 
trying to find uh, open uh, Lopardo. Lopardo yeah. could not get that pass from Sinclair. But held in and got a whistle. And what do we have? I think we might have. Uh, nope. Just an offside call. Yep. Again, again, a good, good crowd on hand here. As you see, part of the Stevenson faithful. And we saw earlier some of the fans for St. Michael's on here, too. Yep. Stevenson games are always well attended. The student body is very supportive of their teams. Most definitely. And, and they are loud and, I don't say raucous, but loud and, 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 and supportive of their Spartan hockey team. Yeah. They, uh, they got the USA chant going uh, right yeah. before face-off, <laughs> right, right after the national anthem. Yeah. So, um, and then the uh, the Canadian people were looking and had to realize where they were. You know, I mean, if they, it would be a different story if we were this game was being played in Toronto. Oh, By the sure. way, St. Michael's is located in downtown Toronto. Yep. I don't know. They hold up posters of Kevin O'Leary. Yeah. Sh Shark Tank. That's right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Action back inside the mm -hmm. Stevenson zone. St. Mike's looking to go up by two here. Gentlemen putting on the pressure. And again, uh, Raptus in the corner, out there in the ice zone, looking in for the majors. But here comes Stevenson the other way. Rolling puck off to the side now. And St. Mike's will try to clear it. Or can they? Now taken by Waldo. Waldo coming in. And now held in by Stevenson. There's a bouncing puck. And they score! I think that was knocked in by Waldo. You get, he came in with except the initial pass. It was Waldo, yep. And we got a replay coming up. It was Waldo. And again, a lot of traffic right around Peter Hutchinson, the St. Michael's goaltender. And we're tied at one. But we'll see. Well, without the assist of MapQuest, we'll see with the route of that puck. But you that was you Waldo, go. yep. The, uh, Hutchinson did make the original save. You're right. Yeah. And then uh, um, when it got loose, uh, Waldo, Ethan Waldo, number 20, was there to bang it in. 6.53 of the first period. It looks like Dasky and Kryzik will get the assist as well. There's a shot that deflects high. I mean, shot taken by uh, Lopardo again. St. Mike's again. Cootie thought about it. Passed it into the corner, keeping it puck in, but here comes Stevenson the other way. Hurd will dump it into the corner. Now taken by Cootie. Cootie. Along the left wing, there's Lopardo just dumping it in the corner. Good check there by St. Mike's, but Puck now back at center ice. 1-1 one, one game now. St. Mike's in Livonia Stevenson. And here at the Eddie Edgar Arena here in Livonia, Michigan. Here's a good chance to say hello to all of our viewers watching this hockey contest. Whether it's, well, we'll get to that in just a moment. Hold that thought as we go back to the action. Puck now dumped inside the St. Mike's uh, zone, cleared away by Hutchinson. Loose, oh, Hutchinson out of the. He came way out of the net there. Yeah, that puck loose in front of the crease, but icing call. Icing calm. call, yeah. But we just want to say the hello to all of our viewers out there watching this hockey contest. And here are, for those watching us on, on the Spectrum, watching us on channel 203. If you're watching us on Spectrum, and then for those watching us on Wild WOW Channel 10. And of course, if you're anywhere watching on AT&T, it's channel 99. Or anywhere from between Luna Pier and up in Marysville. You're watching a start of a great hockey contest. St. Michael's of Toronto and Livonia Stevenson. I think it's a big challenge for both teams here. I mean, both, they're, e they're kind of on equal footing and uh, it's, 
expect a great game there. Hard hitting, clean. He's had some good clean checks already. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a chance now. And Andrew De Silva with a shot. That's a block. He knocked back into the neutral zone. Here comes Stevenson the other way. Coming in, that's Glenn. Dominic Glenn. There's a shot. They score! Number 15, that's Adam Hurd. Her. The freshman. You know, he's always in the right place at the right time. <laughs> One of those pitchers. We've got a replay coming up. But Hurd was in the right place along the right wing. And Dominic Glenn, number 11, did a lot of the work there. He made a nice pass to her, watching on the replay, number 11. There's a beautiful pass from Glenn. Glenn, Glenn had nowhere to go with the puck, or nowhere to go himself with the puck, and he found his man on the right side. Not only that, but Hurd shot it on Hutchinson's stick side, too. Correct. No way could he move that stick back to deflect that puck. And Stevenson now takes a two to one lead. That's just the way, over the years that I've watched Stevenson hockey, what Dominic Glenn just did is not a surprise to me because that's what they're taught. It's, it's all about unselfishness. Yeah. And he was totally unselfish there. He had nowhere to go no. by himself. He wasn't going to make a play by himself. He no. found his open man. He did. And that's the way Stevenson hockey is based. I don't mean to be redundant, but you just look on that scoring sheet. It's just incredible. It's just, you know, blows your mind. It blows your mind. Get blood and bloodshot eye. Now yeah. that. You see that list down of goals, it, it's even down the lane, yeah. and, and the number of assists for Stevenson, just incredible. Well, coach's dream, sure you'd like to have a superstar, but boy, when you can, you can, he can't play the whole game, and when you can effectively, as Coach Mitchell said, put four lines out there, that's, uh, that's a big plus. Well, here comes Stevenson one more time. Laus is out there, Seth Laus. He's one of the captains yep. for, uh, Stevenson, he's... Here he comes Raftus now, we'll dump it in. Raftus has it taken away by uh, McDonald. And we have a penalty. I believe St. Mike's is going to the box. And he might be Cootie. No, I believe it's 23, Pereira. Pereira? Yes. Yeah, yep, it yep, is. it is, Pereira. okay, Pereira. And he's going for a cr signal for his cross-checking. 417 of the uh, first period. With so 417 left to the first period. So Stevenson will go on the power play. Mm -hmm. Man advantage here. Great opportunity to go up by three. Yeah. Go oh, by two. By I'm two. Sorry. I'm by sorry. two. Right. I'm sorry. It's two to one. Two right. to one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, booted out is uh, Patrick McGowan. But Suzio is back is in there. Yeah. Josh Suzio. Very Another dangerous uh, nuclear bomb for Stevenson. If you recall from last year, we we mentioned Patrick McGowan, yep. and he was playing on one of the third line or second. I'm not sure. Yeah, but against Churchill. And we just said that this kid was he was only a junior at the time, and he had a big upside to him. And we look forward to seeing him next year. Well, next year is now. Yep. And uh, he's getting his share of ice time too. Patrick McGowan, number nine. He's out there right now, positioning himself right in front of Peter Hutchinson. Now the puck is knocked back, knocked back inside the Stevenson zone. Hurd, Brendan Hurd, now number five. We'll shoot it right down the ice, and it's an offside. Oh, icing call. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, he, I don't know why he did that. He shot it about three feet behind the red line, and just he had no pressure on him. He just needed to. Skate up about three more feet and dump it. But he didn't, so. The faceoff will come all the way back in the Stevenson zone to the left of Eric Polson. Stevenson will regroup right here. Adam now. Minute to go in the. Up the Laos. Power play for Stevenson. Seth Laos down the left wing. Trying to find a teammate here. Gets it over to Adam Adam Wrist shot bounces right through the gold crease into the corner. Now recovered by Anderson. Anderson had it. Now Hearn. Now battling with uh, uh, Cootie. Centering pass. There's a shot. And Hutchinson. Shot taken by Adamick. And we're going to have another penalty. I think this is, might be called on, uh, it's going to be on St. Michael's again. Yep. 
So we could have a two-man advantage. Yeah, this is going to be our number four, Cootie. Bobby Cootie. He's getting a cross check. Yep. Now they have Cootie and Pereira in the box. And so they'll have a two-man advantage for 39 seconds. Let's see if Stevenson can take advantage of this platinum Five opportunity. Five on three, yeah. Well, this can't make... Uh, Coach Dan Brown of uh, St. Mike's Majors happy. No. Nope. I mean, I know it's, he's got his team hustling, playing hard, but can't allow five on threes against a good team like Stevenson. Got Fantuzzi out there, Raptus out there for uh, St. Michael's. Laos is out there along with Hurd. There's a shot which should be taken by Ian Kimball, and it's cleared. Race for the puck now. I think that's Raftus <laughs> battling along with uh, Anderson for that puck. Now Stevenson will control it. Here they come, Adamick now. Off to Adamick, down the right wing. Adamick, the Fantuzzi battling, and once again, St. Mike's will clear it, and Anderson will go after it. And. Uh the first penalty is over. It's got a minute and 10 to go in the second, so now it's a five on four for Stevenson. Minute and, uh, what's about a little over a minute to go in the uh, power play for Stevenson. Waldo back out on the ice for Stevenson. Holds it back in, shoots it. His shot is wide. Is wide. Intended, actually, I intended to pass for Kimball. Here, here comes Stevenson regrouping. There's a shot that's deflected. Shot taken by McDonald. Puck now cleared back down the ice and racing for it. Oh, Good defensive. What Stop a there on Chris Edwards. By number 14, Adam Hillebrand. Hillebrand. Great defensive job there. St. Michael's holding it in. Here comes Stevenson again. Adamick. Or Aiden and Adamick, number two. Oh, we have a delayed offside. Stevenson has to tag up, which gives St. Mike's a chance to clear it down. And the penalty is nearing an end right now. Coming to an end with only two seconds to go. And another delayed offside now on St. Mike's. Sharkey over to Adamick. Check into the boards. And now, a little ping pong battle. That was taking place in the neutral zone and the bouncing, rolling puck. Stopped mm -hmm. by Polden, a little pushing and shoving going on. Jordan Spears, number 17. Took a little exception to snow being thrown in the face of Eric Polden and uh, doesn't like his goalie getting snowed. So Especially when, when the action is stopped. Yeah, yeah, correct. And I think it's very good officiating by the referees to you know, just move them out of the way. No penalties were called. Continue to play. Seth Louse out there along with Adam Hurd. For Stevenson. And uh, Brendan Hurd, number five. Brendan Hurd had it, lost it. Here's Louse now coming in on Hutchinson. They score! Oh boy. <laughs> Talk about an end of the period goal. St. Mike's Woo! chance to clear it, but Louse, smart handling, stopped that puck at the blue line. Comes in on Hutchinson, and it's a three to one game. And we got a replay coming up. Watch this. St. Mike's was ready to clear it. Laos caught that puck in midair, which you, you can do. Right. And Brendan Hearn made the original play yeah. along the boards, yep. but it was hit to Laos up in his air, up in the air, and like he, like you said, he, he can catch it with his hand, yeah. and uh, that was not considered a hand pass. And the, nope. the goal will go to Laos from Brendan Hurd at 16:47. As the period ends. Wow, what a what a finish! And now that's a that's a big goal. It makes it a two goal game instead of a two to one game. Now we're at three to one, and ugh, 
<laughs> St. Michael's got their work cut out. They do. In this upcoming second period. First 17 minutes, Stevenson. Actually, it was initially St. Mike's, and then the momentum switched to Livonia Stevenson. And after 17 minutes of play, our score, it's the Spartans of Livonia Stevenson 3 and the Majors of St. Michael's of Toronto 1. Stick around, stay tuned. we got more coming up, lots more hockey action. You're watching Sports Spotlight. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Hi everybody and welcome back to the start of the second period of this high school hockey matchup here on Sports Spotlight here on Livonia Television. It's the Spartans of Livonia Stevenson leading 3-1 over St. Michael's of Toronto. This is Neil Rifkin along with Dennis Pushy. Boy, these goose bumps just making St. Michael's and, and Stevenson two outstanding programs. But Stevenson Feeling one to nothing in that first period. Dennis came back three straight goals and took it a third goal right at the end of the first right. period. That that is something that you can take to the locker room of a momentum builder and just run with it. And you know, in this case, skate with it. And I, I think back seven years ago when Stevenson was trailing Churchill, down four to one, came back for that late goal in the second period, and then uh, our friend Dominic, uh, what's his face? Uh, yeah. Three goals in the third period, and they won it. So, don't remind me. Okay, <laughs> my I son, my son Drew was All on right. that Churchill team. I'll <laughs> hold that piece. Yeah, that's right. Your son was playing that game. <laughs> yes, he was. I'm and, and he and Dominic were very good friends. And but yes, yeah. Dominic was a heck of a Stevenson player. 2014 Mr. Yeah. Hockey in the state of Michigan. Yep. Playing now at Ferris State University. Stevenson in the white, St. Michael's <laughs> in the blue. <laughs> As, as the team switch sides here. Seth Laos with a late goal in that first period. But don't count out the St. Michael's team. Vincent. Stevenson ranked number number three, number four, depending on which polls here in the state of Michigan, Division Two. St. Michael's ranked, depending on which poll, either number 22 or number three in Canada. In Canada. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> That's huge. Stevenson currently is has uh, a 16-3 and one record. And as you said, right, third or fourth, depending on what, what you look at. But all I know after watching them in that uh, first period and, and seeing them play earlier this year is they're a very good hockey team. They're, they have a lot of good players on their team. Yeah. And the balance is there. And that, that will come in handy when playoff time comes because you're not depending on just two lines if you're in a tight game. You you have confidence and faith in all of your players that you can throw them out there at any time. That's right. And that's huge. Well, here comes Stevenson down the other way. That is Hurd there, Brandon Hurd. Number five, had it, lost it, and here comes St. Michael's now. St. Michael's trailing by two. Jumping in there in the corner, that was Adam Band, number six. Who's puck in front, Dan? Whistle blows, and we have a stoppage. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah. goes out the moorings. I want to mention um, that the uh, St. Michael's Majors play in the CISAA, which stands for 
Canadian Independent Scholastic Athletic Association, and it's highly thought of. Um, it's a very good league, according to both uh, Coach Mitchell and St. Michael's head coach Dan Brown. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, 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 I mentioned earlier about storied uh, program in the gaming back more than 80 years. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned one other alumnus, Frank Mahavi, the big end. He played for them? He played for St. Michael's. So did Davey Keon. Do you remember that, that name? Uh, MVP, 67 uh, Stanley Cup Finals. Yep, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yep, I, was, I did not know that, but I was given that information today by Coach Brown. And yep. a little, another little tidbit, he wasn't bragging at all. It came up. Coach Brown was telling me that he lives in Toronto near this St. Michael's school, yep. and it's very convenient for him because I said, do you get to a lot of Maple Leafs games? And he said, yeah, I go to almost all of them. He said, my son, Connor Brown, is on the Ma Toronto Maple Leafs. What? <laughs> or he said, my son, and I said, wait a minute, your last name is Brown. Uh, Connor Brown Connor is your son? Brown. He said, yes. Oh my <laughs> goodness. So I said, hey, did you coach him? And he said, well, he never played for St. Michael's, but he said he, um, he, uh, I was coaching him in his early years. I'm sure when the Maple Leafs have a bad day, uh, I'm sure Mike Babcock looms up uh, Coach <laughs> Brown for some tips. Yeah. Uh, uh, especially if uh, Austin Matthews has a slow night or Mr. Tavares has a bad night. We, uh, <laughs> I brought up to him about Austin Matthews. <laughs> and uh, he said it's one of Connor's real good friends on the team. And he said, you know, not only is he a good, and I like to hear this kind of story, not only is he a good hockey player, he said he's a fantastic human being. He said he, sure. just, he does charity work in the Toronto area, and he's just the nicest kid you ever want to meet. And he decided five-year extension with the Maple Leafs. Oh, so, sure. Yeah. So they weren't crazy. They locked him up for a while, and Mike Babcock's going to be happy to have him. But I was shocked when uh, he told me that his son, he wasn't, you know, I don't want to make it like, Coach Dan Brown was bragging about no. his money, and he just told me that we, and I, I said, Connor Brown is your son? Well, and he said, oh, do you know who he is? I said, well, yeah, I watch Hockey Night in Canada. I watch the Red Wings, and, you know. Did, could he reset any Danny Gallivan quotations? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, I mean, there was a time where a lot of those English teachers in the Toronto area were just burning, putting their fists through drywall. <laughs> Whenever he said a howitzer shot by Yvonne Cornwye. Right. <laughs> As we go back to the action. <laughs> We've had our fun for the night. <laughs> <laughs> we might have some more fun. As we continue with the fun on the on the ice right now. Uh, Animic now with a centering pass. It intended for Laos. It goes right through the goal crease. And here comes St. Mike's. Down the other way. Intended pass for number 22, uh, Jake Lavelle. Lavelle. Too far for him. Cleared by Stevenson. Connor Brown. Uh, coach Brown's son plays for the Dan Brown is the coach of the St. Michael Majors team. Uh, I'd I like to hear the story about uh, Matthews being a good kid. <laughs> yeah. You know, nice kid. And, but then again, you know. Hockey players are some of the nicer athletes, pro athletes. Oh, they sure. Really are, you know. Puck, puck now back inside the Stevenson zone. Laos, along with uh, McDonald, trying to clear that, battling with uh, Geiger, St. Mike's. There's the shot from the point taken by Crew. Loose puck, center, McDonald can't clear it. Still held in, held in by St. Michael's. There's a centering pass, shot. Taken and bleed by Geiger. As good as St. Michael's might be, I will tell you, Neil, that the next goal in this hockey game, if St. Mike's wants to win, better be by St. Mike's, just because if you go, if you make it a four to one Stevenson game, if Stevenson were to get the next goal, they're a tough team to beat when they have a three goal oh, lead. Sure. So yeah. we'll wait and see what happens. But uh, you know, I've heard it many, many times teams say, well, the next goal better come by the Red Wings or the next goal because they're not yeah. coming back from this kind of a deficit. Well, I think a four 
to one deficit would be hard for St. Mike's to overcome. Then, no, but they're, they're passing that puck. They're, they're not going to be out of it. No way. Gardner just saw just a moment ago Cole Gardner for St. Michael with a slap shot from yeah. the blue line. Wow. Yep. And Stevenson finally clears it. And here comes St. Michael's now. Bouncing puck. Shot. And, uh, cover it and give his team a break, maybe to get a line change. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that pace goes so you know, pace is going so fast, sometimes they'll catch your breath. But both these teams, you know. Lots of traffic, and right now, tra lots of traffic inside the Stevenson zone. Yeah. Slight momentum in favor of St. Michael's, but let's see what uh, Stevenson can do. Face off just to the right of Eric Polson. St. Michael's will hold him in. And I do know that uh, Coach Mitchell is not opposed to an icing every once in a while or a goalie covering the puck just to give his team a quick breather. Oh, rather than make a mistake. So Michael's doing a really good job passing, keeping that puck in, passing it, keeping that puck along the boards inside the Stevenson zone. That's number 21, Andrew Duncan. Loose puck over on the left. Now at center ice, now regroup. Cootie, regrouping for St. Michael's. And Back and forth between the blue lines there. Bell Stephen Hunt out there. Number nine, and Luke Geiger for, uh, he took a shot there and pulled it in to make that save. Edwards knocks it in the corner for uh, St. Michael's. Battle now along the boards. Uh, on the right wing. You can see right in front of us right there. Brandon Raft is back out. Big threat with, along with, um, Pereira, number 23 and number 14, respectively, for St. Michael. Set up that first Majors goal. The first goal of the hockey game. Nice and call on Stevenson. And the faceoff will be brought back down inside the Spartans. You know, I've known that Stevenson, just watching him over the years, is a great skating team. Every year, year in and year out, he's got a great skating team. But totally impressed with the period and a half that we've watched so far tonight of the ability of the St. Michael's uh, players, uh, their skating ability. So oh, St. You know, these top, this, these top Canadian teams, and this includes St. Michael's. Oh, and they, they score! score! Oh. My goodness, talking about skating and winning face-off. Yep. St. Michael's, indeed. I think that was Raftus. We mentioned Brandon Raftus all over the place. Yep, it is Raftus. And it makes it a three, three to two contest. And we've got a replay coming up. Again, the face off, the siding key on that yep. second goal. And there he Dennis, is. you're right. Raftus wins the face off. Back to Edward. Looks like Clue, number five. Edward Clue, yep. Clue and Raftus is right there. Yep. Right on the, uh, the stick side of Eric Polson. Yep. It's a three to two contest now. But you're right. He had a feeling that St. Mike's was going to score that second goal. There's a loose puck in front. And, and they Polson. almost just tied it. Yeah. If that for Poles and wow. ability there. A couple loose, puck, loose pucks in front, but a winning face off by St. Michael's. That's key. Gets him back within one. That's a key, Neil. Brandon Raft. Wow. Brandon Raft. We don't have the stats on Mr. Raft, but we were told before, the, before today's game that he has put up some good numbers for the majors. And you can see why he's a very, very talented player. That, that brings him back to the hockey game again. We're three to two. Cotton Stevenson having a tough time clearing. Yeah. Finally. This second period so far in the first seven minutes has been pretty much gone St. Mike's way. Hildebrand with a shot. Uh, They've controlled, don't seem like uh, the passing's kind of a let up a bit here for Stevenson. Yeah. So, I saw Hildebrand coming in all alone on the backhand, but easy stop for Hutchinson. Yeah. But the faceoff will be inside St. Michael's zone. Let's see if uh, the, the Spartans can win the faceoff too. Again, puck controlled by St. Michael's. Win the faceoff and here they come. 
It's Geiger down the right wing. Geiger, and he's got uh, Cootie. Intended pass for Cootie, right in front of Eric Colson, and Colson comes up with the stop. You know, Dave Mitchell told me um, no coach can ever do it alone, and I want to shout out to his assistant coaches, Jay Thompson, Brett Rosbury, Kyle Zagata, and Brendan Hall. Um, they do a fine job yeah. as assistant coaches, and you know, Dave, Dave does not take all the credit for this. He's that type of guy where he does not. He, he gives credit where credit is due, and uh, his number one assistant, Jay Thompson, has been with him for a while. These other gentlemen have been here as well, but uh, just a fine, fine coaching staff put together by Dave Mitchell. A good man, Coach Mitchell, fantastic individual. Oh, yeah. I, I have a story to tell you about him and, uh, as the game goes on. Puck now inside the St. Michael zone. Some of the Stevenson fans were looking for a penalty there, but yeah, I think so. Now taken by Kimball and uh, let's see here. It is going to be a penalty. Penalty coming up. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be on Stevenson. Ste oh, Brendan Hurd for interference. Let's see. Yep. Is it That's five or fifteen? It's interference. One of the herds is going to the penalty box. It's number five. It's number five. Yep. 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 So Herd, Brendan Hurd goes to the penalty box. St. Michael's will go on the power play and possibly tie this game up or have a chance to. Let's see. The games that I have watched Stevenson play, they have a good kill. Yeah, they do have a, a good penalty kill. But I'm sure being ranked as high as St. Michael's is, they have a good power play as well. But uh, Stevenson is good at killing right now. So let's see if what, what happens. Puck now, deep inside, in the corner, deep inside the Stevenson zone. Going after it, number 12, De Silva out there for St. Michael's. Along with number 15, Cole Gardner. And Stevenson will clear it. 117 remaining in the St. Michael's power play. And here they come, the guys from Toronto. That's Gardner. Cole Gardner had it, dumped into the corner. Nice play by Seth Laws. Laws puts it up to a teammate and he clears it down. To Very nice play though by Laos. He went around the boards. I don't think he could get it. He had an opening to just shoot it down the ice. So he, he used the boards. He went around the net. Cootie. Yeah. Slap it down the ice inside the Stevenson zone. And Stevenson will clear it. Again. <laughs> Cootie now will lead the attack. Cootie down the right wing. Battling with McDonald. Backhander pass will roll along the boards. Behind the Stevenson net. Now going after it. That was Riley Doig, number 13. Laos had it, Laos it. Here's a chance now for shot. They score! Riley Doig, I believe, number yes, 13. Yes, And a great pass from 26, Sinclair. Thomas Sinclair. And that will be a power play goal. There were five seconds to go in the penalty, and I'm sure we're going to get a replay here. Yeah, watch this. Good passing. We're talking about being out. Two goals earlier in this period, but St. Michael's does not give up. Look at it. They regroup. Doig now gets the pass from Sinclair and beats, pulls in on the short side. Unfortunately, the puck took a bad bounce on yeah. Seth Louth. He had a chance to get it out, but the puck was not flat on, it, on the ice. And it was kind of like... Uh, um, wobbling and he couldn't get a, his stick on it to get it out and St. Mike's took possession so. Right. And, and, and on the short side too there was no chance Polzin was uh, handcuffed. No. Yeah, he was. And, and this game is tied again at three. Power play goal from Riley Doig from Thomas Sinclair. Wow. Just like that 
their three to one lead has evaporated and we are in a three three game. Well, I, I then I have to admit I have to admit slight momentum shifted has shifted towards St. Michael's. Mm -hmm. It has. And we have a penalty here. What? Stevenson in the box. Patrick McGowan now for hooking. Our good friend Patrick McGowan, number nine. Yeah. And St. Michael's on the power play. There's a chance now for Hunt. Hunt with a shot. Over there, Cootie knocks him and chucks him into the boards. We're talking about power plays, and Hunt gives us a shorthanded uh, chance there. That was an opportunity just a moment ago for uh, Wiley Doig again. Cootie now holds it in. Cootie, who's out there in the power play, along with uh, Pereira. And we wrap this is out there too, some clear. Also out there for St. Michael. Oh, did they move that puck good? Look at that, wow. And Claire, Cootie, and it's clear. Yeah, I, I, good passing from uh, Cootie at the point to yep. his forward. There's a strength of Coach Mitchell and the coaching staff of Stevenson. They don't keep the same penalty kill on there the whole no. two minutes. See, he's got another s fresh set of troops out there to kill. Suzio's out there right now for Stevenson. Josh Suzio, number 22. Adam Adamick as well as he makes the steal. There's a chance for Adamick now, down the left wing, battling with uh, Fantuzzi. Good job there by Fantuzzi, checking Adamick. Fantuzzi will take control of the puck. Less than a half a minute to go. But good job, good job by Stevenson killing yes, the, it is. the penalty. Raftus out there, he's dangerous. Raftus, he's got two points on the night. Raftus is a very good player for St. Mike's. There's a shot that goes a bit wide. Penalties uh, coming to a halt here pretty soon. Three se we're down to three seconds. 4-10 remaining in the second period. There is a shot that deflects by number five, Ed Clue. That remains inside the Stevenson zone. And once again, controlled by St. Michael's. And we have a, and the whistle goes. Another this will be on St. Mike's, though. Let's see. Yes, it will be. I think Fantuzzi. Fantuzzi, number 27. He's either going to get him with a hook or a slash. I believe it's a slash. Yes, yeah. referee just made the signal of the slash. So Stevenson will go on the power play. And let's see if they can break this 3-3 three, three tie. 13-14 is the time of the penalty. So with 3.46 remaining in the second period, Let's see what Stevenson can do now. They've, this is uh, St. Mike's first penalty of the period, where Stevenson has had two. There's the Stevenson crowd. Neil, they're always uh, well, uh, they always support their hockey team well. They're going to behave looking for their Spartans to break, break this tie and go in four to three with a little well, momentum at the end of the second well, period. Bye. 346 that go in the second period or any period, yeah. especially with these two teams, <laughs> that's more than an eternity. We have another, we have something else going on there. Huh. We have Austin Adamick getting an unsportsmanlike penalty. So in a 10 minute misconduct now. So the teams will play at Five on five. But yeah. So I, but no. Fantuzzi will go off for slashy, and Adamick will go off for a two-minute unsportsmanlike conduct, which will leave it even at Ooh. five and five. But Adamick will have to serve a ten-minute misconduct, yeah. which will carry over to the third period. Did you see that coming, or did you see that at all when the students were on the ice? No, I, no. I didn't. No. I did not. So big I just saw the referee call it. I saw some little commotion over by the... Uh, by the penalty box, and then Adamick took a seat. So he'll be sit sitting there into the third period with that 10 minute misconduct. But there's no power play right now nope. because the teams 
um, Fantuzzi's uh, Slashy and Adamix Unsportsmanlike will offset each other, yeah. so we're still five on five. So, five on five, no power play for Stevenson. And, and big blow for the Spartans, yeah. too. Yeah. Golden opportunity going through, but let's see what they can still do. Especially when, and I don't know what he did, so it's hard to really comment, but I don't think that will make. Heard for the. There's a chance for Slauson. He's in this by much yeah. on Hutchinson. I don't think that will make Mitchell too happy because he, he doesn't like to run sports for like kind of that way. So especially when you have a chance to go up yeah. a man and try and, uh, you know, you're, you're going on a power play and your power play chance just got taken away. Oh, sure. 257 to go in the period. 3-3 three, three tied. But just a moment ago, Seth Louse uh, had a grand chance right on uh, yeah. St. Michael's Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. Pass up there. So let's see if the momentum can shift here in these last uh, three minutes. As Anderson will take the face off for Stevenson against Raftus, of all people. And we've come to find out tonight what a Tremendous hockey player that Raftus is for, uh, for St. Mike's. Cootie. Brandon Raftus, number 14. Robbie Cootie knocks it into the Stevenson zone. Cleared, though, by Sharkey. And once again, St. Michael's takes control of the neutral zone. They regroup. Here they come. That was uh, Pereira. Had it. Lost it. Now taken by, again, Cootie. Beats it, held in by Stevenson at the blue line. And Hutchinson coming right in was Adam Hildebrand and Hutchinson won't take any chances. Covers up, face off. Will be inside the St. Michael zone. 2.03 remaining in this second period. Good hockey game, folks, I tell you what, don't don't uh, lose your attention on this one. And if you're text messaging, we used to say, you know, don't channel surf. But now with uh, the advanced state of technology here in this early portion of the 21st century, don't text message. Right. Had, watch this contest. You're missing out on a great game. Fantastic matchup. St. Michael's and Livonia Stevenson. And I believe that this, I talk about... Uh, competition, you get nothing out of a 10 to nothing win or anything like no. this. When you play a competitive team, it only makes you better. Oh, sure. And this is actually the second trip to the Detroit area this uh, this season for St. Michael's. They went to Oak Park and played uh, Brother, Rice Brother Rice and uh, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, after this game in Stevenson, they're scheduled to play against Salem. Wh which is not not an easy not an easy point. They're having a good year. Salem. Over Salem, yeah. Well, well coached. Ryan Asenbacher has been one of the top coaches in the KLAA for years and uh, he demands a lot out of his guys and uh, they're always a good team. Part of that I bring the black division of the KLAA. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And, and they re kind of realigned the teams this year, putting the Livonia teams along with the Plymouth Salem, Plymouth. I think Plymouth Canton is in the same division. They got the Livonia teams and the Plymouth teams together. Okay. In that division. The sad thing is we only get to see the, the Livonia teams op only play each other one time. Yes. Every yes, because I used to look forward to um, them playing each other, you know, Steve, especially Stevenson Churchill yeah. twice a year. And yeah. I know it's only once a year, and you can't even say that uh, they're going to meet in the playoffs because. Stevenson is Division Two and Churchill is Division Three. Yeah. Well, maybe Churchill and Franklin, but Churchill and Franklin could possibly, be. Yeah. 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 Go back to the action. St. Michael's now. Final minute in the second period. See if Stevenson can get something going here in these final 60 seconds. Sharkey now down the left wing to Suzio. He's got Laos out there in front. Patrick McGowan's out there too for the Spartans. 
I remember last year the way that we took a liking to that yeah. Patrick McGowan. <laughs> so no reason not to like him again no. this year. How's that? <laughs> no, not you know, fantastic game against Churchill last year. He season. did. He did. He played. He played really well. Wow. Kimball now takes it. I think you made the comment too that uh, wait till his senior year he'll get even better and uh, yeah. you know he's uh, you don't play you don't play, keep playing and playing and playing without getting better. I mean the more you practice and everything, especially in the Coach Mitchell system. So yeah, and even the little things if he doesn't score, doesn't get an assist, still yeah, he is vastly improved and that will do it for the second period. But St. Michael's did come back. Oh, and came back. So we're going to expect a th great third period. At least I am. I, so, so am I. <laughs> three and, to three. And hopefully for our viewers at home, too. You, again, you folks, don't channel surf. Don't play around with your remote controls. And again, for the umpteen time, don't text message. Third period's coming up. Our score after two periods of play, it's Livonia Stevenson three and St. Michael's of Toronto three. You're watching Sports Spotlight. Stay tuned. <laughs> Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Hi everybody and welcome back. As we're moments away from the start of the third period here on Sports Spotlight, high school hockey. And what a team this is. Livonia Stevenson and St. Michael's of Toronto tied at three apiece. This is Neil Rifkin along with Dennis Pushies bringing you all the play-by-play -play action from the Edgar Arena in Livonia, Michigan. Dennis, what a contest thus far through 34 minutes. Yeah, after the first 17, I thought Stevenson had control of the game, yep. but uh, I think Mike showed the little, uh, you know, that they weren't uh, gonna pop quit, and they put up two goals to tie the game, and we're heading into the Third period, and he played the game. Well, you tuned in late. Uh, St. Michael scored first, and then Stevenson came back with three straight, three straight goals in the in the first period. He beat three to one after one period. Then in the second period, St. Michael's came back with two goals of their own, and that's where we stand. Three three. Avonia Stevenson and St. Michael's. Stevenson in the white, and St. Michael's in the blue. As action begins here in this third period. Puck now deep inside the St. Michael's zone. And late in that uh, third period, uh, Steve, one of Stevenson's top players, Austin, Ad Austin Adamek, had a 10-minute uh, misconduct that he's still serving right yeah. now. Bob. It has no effect on the amount of players on the ice. We're playing five on five, but it does, he is sitting in his, Stevenson is playing without him right now, which is a blow to their team. I was going to say a loss, yes, as uh, Stevenson had some opportunities, but the momentum in that second period did did favor St. Mike's. Can, uh, a little bit more control of that uh, neutral zone. Yeah. I will tell you, watching Stevenson over the years, that uh, between uh, Dave Mitchell, Jay Thompson, Rosberry, Brett Rosberry, They'll, they made some, they'll make some adjustments, and uh, as, as I'm sure Coach Dan Brown will for St. Michael's, but these are two well-coached teams. They're not going to sit there and do nothing. They'll, okay. they'll make some adjustments. As you see right now, that's number 24, Dylan Daski, he's got an assist on 
on one of the three Stevenson goals. Just drilled it down the ice, and it's a nice and call against uh, Stevenson. Trying to flip it to the official there, and uh, official backtrack. Yeah. I know they're trying to be helpful, but most of the time you'll find these young men uh, very respectful of the officials, and that's good, a good sign. Face off, deep inside. Stevenson zone, held in by St. Michael's. There's a chance puck goes over the net. And it's cleared. St. Michael's early on still in control of that neutral zone. I'm just amazed at the ice time that number 15 Adam Hurd gets for Stevenson. I'm not trying to downgrade him. He's a great player. Yeah. He's just a freshman. I'm just, you know, in, in the, I, the only time I've seen the Churchill game. Yeah. He had lots of ice time. Dave Mitchell uh, gave him lots of ice time, and he got almost a lot of, not just praise, but uh, the respect and the trust in the, in the young man. Mm -hmm. And like uh, you said earlier in the, in this, in the cable cast, that he, if he stays healthy, he's got a great future. Action stops us uh, again inside the Stevenson zone. Just almost three minutes into this third period. Well, I can remember back and uh, talking about Dominic Lutz. Dominic Lutz, yes, yes. He was uh, 2014. 2014 was the Michigan High School Player of the Year, Mr. Hockey. But in his freshman year, his playing time was kind of limited. So freshmen, as a rule, don't really see that much playing time. They, no. they ease their way into the high school game. Yeah. Dominic was just a phenomenal player. I don't know if he just came to life when, because when Dave Mitchell was out for a couple of years. Yes. Yes, he was. Jerry Ventil was a was the coach, coach yeah. and, and yeah. then Mitchell came in, and then Dominic Lutz just took off. Yeah. In the in the 2011-12 campaign. Yeah. Well, Dave Dave Mitchell also thought nothing of putting Lutz along with his other two top dogs, Tyler Irvin and uh, Devin and Kelly. Kelly. Yes, yeah. and they the per they called the. They didn't call themselves. The newspapers called them the production line. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know a lot of coaches will separate some of their great players. And Mitchell thought nothing of putting those three together to form a a great line, not just a good line. They were a great line. Okay. They complemented each other well. All three were good in their own right. Okay. Down and down there looks like a tremendous, phenomenal right wing. He's at uh, Ferris State right now, as I said. Tyler Irvin is um, at Merrimack College. And Devin mm. Kelly went on to play uh, junior hockey, but he's he's out of hockey right now. But he was a tremendous high school player, too. Mm -hmm. you know, three of them were great high school players. Well, Devin, and of course, uh, big heat and big car, big keys to their uh, 2013 championship. Oh, yeah. Hutchinson comes up with a stop for St. Michael's. You know, I was look, speaking of which, I, I was looking at the uh, top of the face off the main in the St. Michael's zone. Uh, I was looking at the top of the pools in the, in the, col in the college hockey, Division One. And, I got, and our research department's got to do a little bit more. Uh, because, when, well, the top Michigan team I saw, uh, Western Michigan. Well, I'm not surprised by that. They've always had a good program. Yes. But the one team that really stuck out, that's in not quite the top 10, but number 11 in some pools, number 12 in others, Arizona State. Wow. And, uh, yeah, really? we got to check. That, that's, uh, that's an assignment for our research department. Why yeah. is Arizona State? Yeah. And you got, yeah. I don't see Minnesota anywhere in the top 20. Ohio State, which is ruling the Big Ten hockey conference, mm -hmm. is at number three. So they're at the top there. Yeah. But Arizona State. Have ice in Arizona? I, I know, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's so hot. Yeah, it's <laughs> no. 
Well, if you go north of there, in the mountains towards Flagstaff, yes, but down near uh, the Toots, I mean, the Scottsdale. Yeah. Down, uh, that depending, they, they get lots of smog down there, but in terms of ice. <laughs> you know, I could stand corrected on this when I say it, but I want to say that Austin Matthews, uh-oh, somebody's going to say Wait a minute, uh, Spears, Jaden? Yeah, Jaden Spears is going, signaling the cross check. Yep, he's going 447 of the third period. That puts St. Michael's on a, penal, on a power play. But what, getting back to what I was going to say is that like I said, I could stand corrected on this, yeah, but right. that Austin Matthews, the superstar for Toronto, is from the Phoenix, Arizona area. I think so. Well, of course, of course that number one pick that everyone's talking about, that hot potential number one pick for 2019, Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes, yeah. From uh, Florida. Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check that out because. This is what I've heard, and, and I, I know that Connor McDavid and Matthews are two of the top players in the game, and I, I believe it was Matthews. And I, I don't know why that name sticks, why his name sticks in my head being from Phoenix, but there is somebody, a top-notch player that's from Phoenix. Maybe Keiko from Buffalo, I'm not sure. But I thought it was Matthews. But you wonder what, what the Phoenix area has to offer with Hockey and they score is uh -oh. Cootie on the power play. Wow. If you talk about warm weather and hockey, oh. just like that. Oh, Robbie assisted. Cootie wow. from the blue line. On a power play goal, too. That bouncing, and there was a bouncing puck. Polson didn't see it. St. Michael's now takes a 4-3 to three lead. And here's the replay. Look at that. I believe after seeing that replay that... The goal is Cooties, no doubt, but it went off of Joe Sharkey's stick accidentally. It deflected off of yeah. there, and Polson didn't see it. No. I don't think he saw it. I think it was deflected I, off of Sharkey. I, I, I saw a deflection there, too, because it was like Cootie. I mean, his I mean goal he was going to shoot it in I, on Polson. Polson was an excellent goaltender. Yeah, these, these high school goalies, if they could see it, they'll stop it usually. And... Uh, I think there was a total deflection on that and just went somewhere that Polson's eyes didn't see it. So St. Michael's retakes the lead, four to three. And the pressure still inside the Stevenson zone. So the penalty for on Spears, that's over. It's costly, yeah. yeah and costly too, yeah. yeah. Costly the goal. Stevenson has got to find a way to stay away from the penalty box. Yep. Here's the chance for a loud, you know, correction. A chance for, oh, I was going to say a chance for Dasky, that shot. And with, with, from the left wing, the pass there from McDonald. But here comes St. Mike. Oh, oh, oh. Lowes with the, with the check right at the St. Mike's blue line. Now recovered, puck taken by Glenn, Dominic Glenn. Uh-oh. Here comes Hildebrand with a shot. Scores! Adam Hillebrand with the loose puck. Uh, you want to see something. If we get a replay on this, you will see a great play pass. Watch number 19, I believe it is. Stephen Hunt. Hunt. Yep. Watch the nice pass. Totally Stevenson hockey where it's unselfish. Replay coming up. Let's see. Now watch this unselfish play by Hunt. Look there at that. Is. Look at that pass. He let it about three feet in front of Hildebrand. Beautiful shot on the short side. Anywhere no. else, be, if it was behind him, he wouldn't have had that beautiful opportunity. Yeah. Stephen Hunt deserves a great uh, assist on that. And Hildebrand for the great shot as well. So beautiful pass. Total play. teamwork. And that defines Stevenson hockey, as far as I'm concerned. And there was no way Peter Hutchinson was no. going to get that. He, no that, way. That, that shot take came in through on the short side, and he was playing on the right side of the crease. We're tied at Guess four. Guess what? I was just going to say we're talking about great hockey. Yeah. Four four. Four four. <laughs> How we're do you tied. Like that? Oh, <laughs> folks. 
Folks, do not channel surf. Don't worry about the Big Bang Theory. Don't worry about Real Housewives or text messaging. This is where the action is on Sports Spotlight. This oh, is, man. This right now, this is putting both Dennis and Neil on the edge <laughs> of their seats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Action now deep inside the Stevenson zone. Failing for it. Uh, Aiden Anamek along with the Pereira. That top line is out there now for St. Michael. Pereira along with Raftis. Here comes Hurd now. Cross ice pass for Hurd. This one just didn't miss by much by Kimball. Wow. Hutchinson did not see that. Bouncing puck. Just missed going over the goal line. By, by just a little. The puck now. Deep inside the Stevenson zone. Here comes St. Michael's. Sinclair is out there along with Geiger. And Laos. And knock it back into the neutral zone. I think, Clear. I think Polson was fooled on that one a little bit. And he got his blocker up at the last minute. Good round for him. Good reaction there by Polzen. Puck now dumped inside, deep inside the Ooh. St. Michael's zone. And the Majors better be careful. Yeah, that's Ethan Waldo, number 20, who intercepted that for Stevenson. And he's bucking here. Here comes here come St. Mike's now. Down the left wing, that's uh, Lopardo. Lopardo had it, lost it. Now dumped in the corner. And racing for it there is McGowan. After McGowan. Is it over to the blue line? Now the puck comes loose. The Stevenson student section wanted a penalty there. Because it was right in front of them. Uh oh. Here's a chance for Anderson. Anderson! And the puck and, and the net comes off the moorings. He was coming down the right wing. Neil, I'd like to say something. You and yeah. I are not part of the MHSAA. So no. this is not a promotional announcement. No, it's not. However, I will tell all of you fans that are watching here, if you have not seen a high school game in person, come out. It's very exciting to watch. It's these, fun. These kids give it their all. It, the price is reasonable, and you, oh. gear, you are guaranteed a good two hours of entertainment when you see a, you know, some you'll see some good hockey. Yep, and it's not too late either. I know uh, the K, uh, I know Stevenson's got a uh, contest ho uh, here in Livonia, two more home games, yeah. hosting uh, Warren De La Salle, as well as Howell. And those are two very good programs. Yep. And you don't have to travel far. The price is reasonable. You don't have to worry about opening up a second mortgage like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we got, and we got and postseason coming up too. A great example, Plymouth and Stevenson had a great opening round last they year. Did. Yeah. And if you come to the Eddie Edgar Arena, as are most arenas in the Metro Detroit area, you know, you're coming to a clean arena, you know, very well kept up to date and you know, clean and very, very good. 720 remaining in this third period. Sounded like a promotional campaign for the <laughs> Michigan High School <laughs> Athletic Association, but oh, I just enjoy good hockey like yeah, you do. That's <laughs> right. And we're seeing it tonight. You can't beat this, folks. No. This no. Great contest between two fine programs. Stevenson, ranked in the top five in the state of Michigan, Division II. St. Michael's of Toronto, ranked in the top 25 in all of Canada. Battling here. I have to tell you, on that last goal by Stevenson, Hildebrand got a beautiful pass from Hunt. Yeah. If you just watch there, um, Hunt tried to, or Hildebrand tried to return the favor, yeah. making a beautiful pass to Hunt. So yeah. what goes around comes, comes around. around. Yep. You know? Yeah. It's, we're teammates, let's do what's best for the team. And they play that way. Very unselfish. And again, if you look at the, at the scoring sheet for the Stevenson team, and look at their record for the, yep. the year. Well balanced. And we'll keep an eye on number 14 and 19, respectively. Yep. And see back there, Hildebrand's back there with uh, Joe Sharkey. On the other hand, puck deep inside the Stevenson zone. 
And Dominic Glenn trying to clear it out, and here they come. That's Hunt amazing. now, down the right side. Good job there on defense for St. Michael's. That's another very unselfish uh, player, is number 11, Dominic Glenn. He's looking to pass. And he, he's a very good player. Puck now cleared back inside the St. Michael's zone, and they're going to regroup the majors. There's a cross ice pass there from Cole Gardner. Intended for, looks like Sinclair and St. Michael's is offside. Before we get too far gone, and I'm not able to get this on the air, I think this is huge to say. Yeah. It's very important to Coach Mitchell is the academics of the program, of the players. It's a privilege to play hockey. It's not, the, not your right. Yeah. And they have a study hall every Monday. It's conducted by former Stevenson High School principal Jim Gibbons, who did the ceremonial ice uh, puck drop tonight yep. and the Stevenson High School team made all state again this year with a 3.4 team grade point average. That's pretty good. Congratulations gentlemen. Yeah, congr you're not just hockey players, you're great students as well. Great student athletes, congratulations to the yep. Ste uh, Livonia Stevenson hockey team. And congratulations also goes out to Dave Mitchell because it would be real easy to just worry about their hockey skills, but he takes the academics seriously, as does um, Mr. Jim Gibbons, who, I, like I said, is one of my favorite people. He's just a class class. He always has been. The kids love him when he was the principal, and that's unusual when they like their principal. Yeah. <laughs> Jim is a great guy. And, and he's there for every student in Greenwich. Yeah, he is. And he likes the kids, whether you're an athlete or whether you're in the band or what you are. He just loves kids. Here's the scramble in front there. St. Michael's had an opportunity. Now Stevenson will come the other way. Led by Anderson. Down the right wing. Anderson. This shot. And lost the, Adam lost the handle on it. Centering pass from Anderson. And St. Michael's will go the other way. Boy, now the pace is picking up. Yep. Now, the, now you'll see... The cream rise to the top. You'll see it right now. 5-10 remaining in regulation time. Keep in mind, folks, if we end up with a tie, we go to overtime. And the whistle blows and the action stops. Are you predicting overtime? I don't know, but... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, and I, I don't know who it's going to be, but I'm predicting that somebody's going to get a goal in regulation and we're not going to see overtime. It, well, we, we had, uh, they had that happen a couple of years ago. Yeah. When Stevenson and Churchill were heading towards overtime, yeah. and Stevenson prevailed. And I don't know who, I'm not going to predict who's going to get the winning goal. I'm just going to say, I, I'm predicting at the, at the pace that we're going at, there's going to be a bad bounce or something, and we're going to get a goal, and one team is going to win at five to four in regulation. That's what I'm seeing right now, and there's five minutes to go. A lot of things can happen. A lot of things, you know, you can get a guy, I, you know, S somebody like Rob Cootie who's got a lucky break in a, a bounce pass or that line led led by, um, what was it? oh yeah, Brandon Raftis. Brandon Raftis has had an extra game. Yeah. And Fine skate, and then on the other side, Hill, Hill, Brandon, or Hunt. Hurd. Or Hurd, or the Hurd, yeah. or, or maybe or possibly in, uh, Adam Hurd. Yeah. Number, number 15. Or. Austin, Ad Austin Adamick, Adam he's it. out of the box now from his misconduct, so yeah. he's back playing now, so yeah. uh, he's definitely capable. Yeah. Good good play there by the St. Mike's player. So let's see what happens here. Will somebody score before the end of the period? As the clock stops at 4.37 remaining now in regulation. Just want to send a hello out there to a longtime Livonia resident, Mr. Thomas Quasney, CPA out there in Eastern Livonia, 1956, senior class president of Bentley High School. Oh boy. Uh, just to say a big hello out there and thank you for the rum cake for Christmas. Good, delicious rum cake. Got a great story. Unfortunately, I have to well, I'm gonna hold that thought for just a bit here as we go back to the action. As again, action between the blue lines here from both St. Michael's and Stevenson. Kimball going after it gives a check to that St. Mike's defender now. Hurd, Brendan Hurd, has that puck, trying to find a teammate. And he went trying to stay away from a couple St. Mike's defenders. Actually, forwards for that matter. 
Trying to look to steal that puck and take, try to take the lead as the Spartans were just dumping in behind Peter Hutchinson. Clock ticking. Under four minutes now remaining. And the whistle blows, and it looks like we have an offsides call against I Mike. I didn't realize that that line of uh, Kimball and number 20, Ethan Walden, they're both sophomores, so, you know. You know, Walden was all over the place. We didn't mention his name that much in the last two periods, but he could be another guy who could uh, right. score the winning goal. Yeah. Or go-ahead goal. Go-ahead, yeah. We'll see what happens here. Or Luke Geiger, number nine for St. Michael. Right. I mean, there's, there's a lot of possibilities. And as like I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Coach uh, Mitchell told me that he has very, four very capable lines. It's a balanced team. So go ahead and try and predict. Look, <laughs> look at fake, I mean, a fake step there by uh, Cole Gardner. But here comes Stevenson the other way. Oh, and then what a <laughs> chance right there for Stevenson. Number 20. Waldo. Yep. And you're talking about, I uh, haven't mentioned his name that much in, since the first period. Had a chance right there on Peter Hutchinson, but number 30 comes uh, comes up with a stop for St. Michael. Whew. Clock stops with 319. Wow. <laughs> this game will take your breath away. Wow, look at that. Stop, stop taking pictures and turn your back around. Turn around, watch the game. Look at that. Call his mom. Yeah. <laughs> your son's playing. Give him action sketch. I'll teach him a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's shaking up for, yeah. for St. Mike's, the trainer coming out, but apparently he's okay. He skates off under his own power. Face off deep inside the St. Michael's zone. Good to see that he could skate off under his and you see that kid there with his back to the, see, that's what he had his back to the game with a <laughs> selfie. Come on, give him a camera. <laughs> then he won't know what to do with it. Right. <laughs> Face off remains inside the St. Uh, Michael zone to the left of Peter Hutchinson. Anderson losing that faceoff, won by um, Cootie. Correction on that. Uh, Bassiano. His pass goes a little bit too far, no chasing after it is Mark Stefanik. I haven't mentioned his name that much, and it's a nice and calling it St. Michael's. Mark Stefanik is a sophomore defenseman, big upside to him, family history. Older brother Kevin Stefanik was a four-year player at Stevenson, yes, graduated right. last year, was the captain the last two years. Heck of a player, and Mark is a really good player and uh, I'm sure he'll come on and into his own and just a uh, matter of time. Yeah, you know, that's all. It's the Spanish have done well. Let's go back to the action. It's between the blue lines here. Stevenson will clear it out of their own zone. Trying to control it. Fantuzzi for St. Michael's. Battle on the far side. And it's cleared. Pudi will Take it for St. Michael's. Fantuzzi will knock it into the corner. Clock ticking, 2.25 remaining in regulation. Buck loose in the corner. And deep inside the Stevenson zone, the whistle blows and the action will stop. With exactly 2.17 remaining in this third period. Faceoff will be deep inside the Stevenson zone. And both teams guys are being very cautious here. I think so, yeah. Play by number four, Stephen McDonald. Yeah. As Hildebrand and Lavelle on the faceoff, icing call against Stevenson again. Speaking of Jim Gibbons, there he is standing right behind the net. Nice shot of him. Yeah. You know, there's always great views from wherever you sit or stand inside Eddie Edgar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
whether you're on, on one of the far ends of the arena, east end, west end, or right at center right. Yep. Well lit. All, all the action as we go back to the action. Both teams just battling between the blue lines right here. Stevenson and Suzio is knocked down. We got a penalty. By Fantuzzi and the action stops. Yep, penalty coming up. Fantuzzi's gonna go, I believe, unless he's gonna call it. No, Stevenson guys are fist pumping each other like there's a penalty on St. Mike's. I think I thought, I thought they could have called it on each. Even strength, but it looks like Fantuzzi was going. Yep, and you see the crowd, but yeah, Fantuzzi yeah. took down the Adamic at the blue line. And Stevens, no, I mean, crowd took down uh, Suzio. I'm Suzio. sorry, yep. and as the Stevenson crowd will tell you, you're guilty. <laughs> well, <laughs> great opportunity here. Yeah. Power play, he goes off for holding it. 150. Here's a chance now, breakaway chance for St. Michael's. And stop, and we got a penalty coming up. Are we going to get a penalty shot? Possibly. Lopardo on the breakaway. It's Adamick, and he's going he's gonna to get a hooking call, but I don't see a sign from the referee as a, uh, as a, penalty, as a shot. penalty shot. No, and I don't think he had. That's what the St. Michael's player, the captain, is asking right now. Ra Ra yeah, Raptus is at, Raptus and is Brandon. asking, but. I don't think he had a clear-cut breakaway. I think no. Adamick was with him no. and just got his stick hooked around him, and Adamick will go to the box yeah. 11 seconds later, just 11 seconds uh, oh. past uh, when Stevenson had a power play. So, you know. You know. The St. Michael's team, they have won the faceoffs even in the shorthand, and you just saw right there yep. that uh, Stevenson was not prepared for that, but Austin, Austin the power play, but now we're gonna go four on four hockey right now. Well, let's see what happens. Anything goes. On four on four, a minute thirty left in regulation. He did. I just heard the PA announcer. He did call Adamick for a hook. And that call was made at fifteen twenty one in the third period. Held in though by St. Michael's. Puck still loose. Deep inside the Stevenson Ooh. zone. Woo! <laughs> Here's a chance for Gardner. His shot is blocked. Puck held in by Sinclair. Sinclair. And the bouncing puck just wide of the Stevenson net. And the action stops and the whistle is sounded as the net comes slightly off the moorings. Paulson in that last 30 seconds just came up huge for Stevenson. There were some pin point opportunities for St. Michael and then Polson answered the call. Oh. Now we can't see, I don't know if Hutchinson was pulled from the net for St. Michael's. We don't, I don't think they have that extra attacker. We don't. No. No. No, there, we're four on four right now. They were four on four. That's and Stevenson's right. going to call a timeout right now just to, just to make sure they have their, um, everything, their ducks in a row right now. So. Ballads and bluebells and everything else, but for our viewers at home, you at home, just a friendly reminder. 4-4 four, four tie, Livonia Stevenson and St. Michael's of Toronto. This is Neil Rifkin, along with Dennis Bush. He's from the Eddie Edgar Arena here in Livonia, Michigan. If you just tuned in late, St. Michael's uh, got on the scoreboard first back in the first period. Luke Geiger with, uh, and, or excuse me, uh, yeah, Luke Geiger scoring the first goal of the game, and St. Mike's took the Early lead one to nothing. Then Stevenson came back with three straight goals of their own. Ethan Waldo, Adam Hurd, and Seth Laus. Laus with the goal just before the end of that first period, and Stevenson led three to one. And then St. Michael's came back in the second period with goals scored by Brandon Raftus and Riley Doig. Doig's uh, goal scored on a power play, and we were tied at three apiece. And then here in this third period. Robbie Cootie with a unassisted goal, bouncing puck that Eric Poles and the Steven, Stevenson goaltender could not stop, and St. Mike's took the lead. And then Adam Hill, Hildebrand, about a minute and 18 seconds later, tied it up. 
And a beautiful pass from Stephen Hunt, and that's where we stand, 4-4. Four, four. With only 45 seconds to go, and we're still in 4-4 four and four hockey. Cole Gardner now trying to find something. There's a pass, centering pass, nobody there. Cootie now, over on the left wing. Battling with the Stevenson uh, forward. Now there's a battle in the corner right now. 27 seconds remaining. Sharky now. Sharky along with Geiger. Fighting for that puck. Also joining into the, into the fracas is Brandon Raftis. Now Cootie from the point. Weak shot. Held in again by Cootie. He'll just dump it in the corner. Final seconds of this third period. Loose puck in front and oh, holes and makes the stop and a little jibber jabbering, some conversation between a couple St. Mike's players. Looks like Cootie and Kimball. To me, Neil. Uh, <laughs> How's your post then? Yeah. Yeah. That's number 34, Eric Poles, and the goalie for uh, Stevenson wow. has come up huge in this third period. He's he's the reason that the game is not uh, is, is tied right now. Otherwise, St. Mike's would have the lead. He's come up big. St. Mike's are putting on a lot of pressure here in these last several minutes of this third period. And that will do it. And guess what, folks? We are going to overtime. For the second time in 32 years, Sports Spotlight will be going to sudden death overtime. And the first time in our, when we've and the first time ever in presenting high school hockey. So thus, after three periods of play, at the end of regulation, our score, it's Livonia Stevenson four, and St. Michael's of Toronto four. Stick around, stay tuned. Overtime is coming up. And guy and Dennis, overtime, uh, this will not be 17 minutes, just to let our viewers know, it's gonna just gonna be eight, eight minutes. minutes. Right. And in case, we have no uh, no scoring in eight minutes. I mean, first team that scores will win it. Right, and the penalties right now we're playing four on four hockey. Yep, those penalties carry over into overtime. Um, uh, Adamick still has 21 seconds to go on his penalty for Stevenson, and, and uh, Vantuzzi. No, Vantuzzi, number 27, has 10 seconds. So it will be a short power play when. Uh, Fantuzzi comes out of the net. I It'll be a 17 second power play for St. Mike's. You know, the, you know, experiencing overtime and announcing it is an experience. Last time we did this on Sports Spotlight, I said this is the second time in 32 years. The last, the, the first time we did it was when we had the, uh, the, uh, the PD invitation. Okay. Back, way back 15 years ago. When we had, we were uh, taping uh, teams from Orlando and Win uh, Winchester, Massachusetts. Garrett Sider scored the winning goal wow. for Orlando. Great memory. <laughs> Way 15 years ago. Good. I remember when they hosted, when Livonia hosted that, but I don't remember that uh, it, it, game. It was our first game. It was our first game of the day. And it's a, what could top that? As we go back to the action, here we go. Overtime. <laughs> Just like that. Show sure how. St. Michael's came out of the starting gate. And we're getting and a penalty. Chris, Chris Edwards coming out there. Yeah, we're getting a penalty right off the bat here. It's a slash to Adam Hurd, number 15. So, so, so in one second, when Fantuzzi comes out, then they'll... They'll have an 11 second five on three. Five on three, so St. technically St. Michael's will have a two man advantage for about, well, about, about 11 seconds. 11 seconds. And if they don't score at that point, then they'll have a five on four. Okay, Fantuzzi, Fantuzzi is, is out. out. And, and they're just gonna hold Adamic the puck. is out, so now we're at a minute and 45 to go in the penalty, the slashing penalty to Adam mm -hmm. Hurd. So, so Stevenson needs to fight this off right now. Big time, big time. Get it into the neutral zone. St. Michael's threatening right now. And still, at this late, the late juncture of the game, passing the puck beautifully. Stevenson's trying to find a way to clear it. And they got some big guns out there. Uh, 
Bassiano is out there on defense, number three. David Bassiano has played a good game. Yeah, Stevenson will clear it. Also yeah. out there, Cole Gardner, number 15 for St. Michael's. Here they come. Jake Reveal. Reveal, number 27. Coming in right now, that is number nine. That's Geiger who scored the first goal of the game. And pulls in, will make the stop. A little less than a minute to go in the uh, Stevenson penalty. So this will be a challenging one minute for Stevenson to get the puck out of their zone and not allow St. Michaels to score the game winner. So it's gonna be Sinclair and Louth. Important yes. face off the face off right here in the Stevenson zone. Great job by number seven. Mark Stefanik. Yep. Great job. Took control of it, found the opening, and whipped it down the ice. Here comes St. Michaels down the right wing. It is Cootie. Cootie who scored the fourth goal for, or the go-ahead goal for St. Michaels in that third period. Battling out the blue line, held in by the majors. There's a shot. Take it from my, looks like Jank. Jank for St. Mike. Now Cootie, a race for that puck. Cootie out there along with Riley Doig. He's got a goal. Sinclair out there as well for St. Michael. And on the other side for Stevenson, while well, we get those names and numbers in just a moment. Cootie has it. Susio's out there, along with Hunt and Sharkey. And they did fight off the penalty. Stevenson's back at full strength as pulls and holds on. So great job by the Stevenson penalty killers. Uh, the five on three wasn't a huge no. deal for St. Mike's, only because they had uh, 10 seconds. You know, it, if it becomes like a 40 second five on three, then that's, that's trouble. But 10 seconds, Stefanik cleared that puck out, and, uh, and then they fought off the five on four. So now we're back to five on five. Gowan taking that face off for Stevenson, and Spartans initially could not clear, but here they come. Hunt now, he'll dump it into the corner. Gowan along with Suzio. Suzio takes control of the puck. Can't find it. Now back to the key. McDonald will just dump it in, in the corner now. Going after it. That was McGowan. McGowan had it, lost it. Suzio out there along with uh, Jaden Spears. Got to get something going for the Spartans, but can't as St. Michael's will clear it. Here they come. And going the other way, that's Edwards. Edwards will dump it in, in the corner now. He's got Lopardo out there. And Stevenson will clear it back to center ice. Taken out by McGowan. And now the other way, St. Michaels will take it. And the whistle blows. I think we got a penalty coming up. A little jawing, a little pushing, a little pushing, a little shoving. We do. I don't know if it's Adamic. I don't know if it might be. I think we're sick. And Adam Hearn is talking to uh, one of the officials. It is a penalty on. Adam Hearn, number 15, and you see on your TV screen, was shaking his head. And now Adam Hildebrand is talking to the officials. One of the officials. Right? No, there's nothing. There's nothing. Going on. nothing. I, I think there's. I think Stevenson was calling at. But a lot of pushing and shoving going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Sure was, right? St. Michael's again now. Adam Hurd had a short discussion with the official, but nothing much where there was complaining, but... But they better be careful because they got, they, they, they got Cootie back out on the ice. They got Doig out there for St. Michael's. Clock ticking, 4.17 remaining in this overtime period. First team that scores wins it. Cootie now brings it in. Dumps it into the corner down the left wing. Held in by Lavelle. Heard. Battling along with uh, Duncan and we got a 
Well, action stops, and I think we got a penalty. penalty we do. We do. It's uh, going to be heard again. It is heard. Wow. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Is he showing his inexperience here, his freshman inexperience? We talked about what a great player he is as a freshman, but that's his second penalty in overtime now. He and took a slash in with when 10 seconds in, and now with. 348 left in the period, he takes another penalty. When, when you're a freshman or a sophomore, underclassman, and you know, those upperclassmen will take advantage of you. And yeah. he, he's a great player. He'll learn, you know. He will learn. You know, chalk it up as experience. Yeah, that's his well, second penalty that's in the overtime. <laughs> so, Stevenson has got to battle this uh, St. Michael's power play. There's a chance as St. Michael's putting on the pressure. Top of the key now. Pass out there from Clue. Handing on that, I believe that was Sinclair. High shot goes over the net. Net, into the netting it goes, so the action will stop. Face off remains inside the Stevenson zone. Yep. They just have to hope they win some face offs here and of the puck down the net, or down the ice, and uh, the puck out of their net. 141 to go in the, in the uh, third penalty. It was officially ruled as a high stick. Sinclair out there along with Geiger and Pereira. Cootie still out there. Battle on the boards well. Good battling with Laos there along the boards. Here's Sinclair now. Sinclair had lost a handle briefly on it. Passes it back. Sinclair bouncing puck in front and the puck wanders behind the net and Stevenson net. Stevenson doing everything they can to put and they do. Back at center ice. St. Michael's regroups. Clock ticking. 253 remaining in this overtime period. Cootie now. On side, bailing with Hunt. Hunt tries to clear it, but the wrong way. Stevenson can't finally clear it. Here comes Hunt now. Two on one. Here Andrea comes Stevenson. Rush. Hildebrand, his shot. Up in the netting it goes, wow. Well, that would have been a way to end it, huh? A shorthanded goal. Hunt and Hildebrand yeah. on a odd man rush. And the faceoff will be inside the St. Michael zone. It'll be to the left of... Peter Hutchinson, the goaltender. Which means it had to be tipped off of the end of the netting off of the St. Michael's uh, player stick. Face off. Won by St. Michael's. Here they come. Down the ice they go. Long pass and the shot taken. It looks like by Lavelle. And the stop is made by Posen. Clock stops, 2.27 now, remaining in this overtime period. Faceoff will be to the left, or excuse me, to the right of Stevenson goaltender Eric Polson. I don't know if Geiger's on the ice, number nine, now, but you got to keep your eye on that kid. Raptus is out there right now. Brandon Raptus, number 14, and yeah. Stevenson will clear it. Yep. Now uh, Gardner will take it for St. Michael's. Gardner. Down the right wing and taking it. Uh, that's uh, Fantuzzi. Fantuzzi in the corner. Fantuzzi has it. Loose puck in front. They're centering pass. They score! You called it. Raftus. Brandon yep. Raftus. He is a player. <laughs> Number 14 for St. Michael's. The second goal of the night. And St. Mike's wins it in overtime. Wow. Brandon <laughs> Raftus with his second point of the night. Winning goal. With 159 left in overtime. And here's the replay on this. Bouncing puck. It hit it to Stevenson. Defend I think it hit uh, 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 St Mark Stefanik. Mark Stefanik, yeah. Bounced back to Raftus right in front. And Raftus put it in past Eric Polzin. And that will do it. Wow. <laughs> what a contest. What a hockey game. <laughs> Our final score in sudden death overtime. It was St. Michael's of Toronto 5, 
And here's the replay. I'm going to hold that thought for a moment. Here's the replay one more time. Look at this. It's an earning pass from Fantuzzi. Hits the Fanic. It did hit the Fanic. Yes, it did. And then Raptus was right there and just poked it right in. Yep. And there was nothing that Eric Paulson could do. He, he made the original stop, but the puck was just loose. And uh, my feeling on this game, Neil, is that it uh, was a great hockey game. Great contest. And it's a shame that anybody had to lose it, really. I mean, because both, both teams are winners, as far as I'm concerned. Oh. There's, there's just so much good to come out of this game. It was a fantastic contest and against featuring two first-caliber hockey teams, yeah. Bologna Stevenson and St. Michael's. And I was going to say the final score of our contest, ending in sudden death overtime. It was St. Michael's of Toronto, five. Livonia Stevenson, four. And speak of which, the Stevenson team has got to get some rest because uh, <laughs> no rest for the weary. They have to play Catholic Central. Tomorrow. So yeah. I have 20, yeah. Yeah, uh, 24 hours after this contest. Yep. Yep. But a great contest overall. And you, viewer, you viewers at home, we hope that you enjoyed this contest. I mean, you, only the second time in 32 years here on Sports Spotlight have we featured a sudden death overtime contest, and what a thriller it was. And we appreciate you watching, but as I said, <laughs> come out to the arena sometime and you'll really get a thrill watching these kids play. They play with their heart. It's not about the free agency. It's not about money. It's about playing with their heart, and they play hard. And we just want to say thank you to all of you tuned in and watch this great hockey contest, especially for all of you, for all of you who tuned in from start to finish. Our hats off to all of you. And for the entire production crew behind the scenes here, and I just want to say, in the words of our good friend Bill Tyler, life is good. For the entire production crew behind the scenes here at the Eddie Edgar Arena, as well for, as well as for Mr. Dennis Pushies, this is Neil Rifkin saying so long for Sports Spotlight.